The Book of Remembrance of Our Ancient Grandmothers, The Appendix, 10 Guidances for Happy Living. Number one, you are to love anarchist with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your power. Number two, you are to always walk in the holiness of the sanctity of marriage and anticipate it from your childhood. Number three, you are to follow no other example in religion but the loving kindness of anarchist and that which was established by the righteous with him during the first great sevening. Number four, each person is to love their fellow and deem them equal to themselves. Number five, you are to respect and love your children and protect them from evil and diligently teach them the ways of holiness. Number six, you are to purify yourselves by sevens in all things. Number seven, you are to respect the creator Moza, the lamb who is himself, the living water that issues forth to follow each person that finds breath and not lay claim to that which he has made for other persons. Number eight, you are to respect all life and guard with diligence all the lives of those who are the objects of creation. Number nine, you are to seek no other authority than the authority of Elda, which brings a response from the Urko Deshoi, who are the holy watchers of heaven. Number 10, you are to bear up under the burden of oppression without violence. Seven Stations of Heaven At death, each person proceeds into the first station, light, and the love of the Lord. And when you accept and understand the nature of that love, then you take the light and love with you and enter into the second station, love for you coming from the Urko to Shoy. And when you are filled with the joy of the friendship and relationships together with all of creation, then you take the love and light and the presence of the Urkota Shoy with you to meet face to face with third station, the man the anarchist became. And when you are ready to proceed, taking with you the love of the Lord and the Urkota Shoy with him personally, you then enter into the fourth station, spirit of the presence of anarchist, and become aware of how your life affected him. And being thus made whole, many enter into service as angels of the presence. Then the righteous enter the kingdom of heaven and fifth station, the millennium. It is a time of fulfillment of the spirit and for the joining of families. After this time, all souls proceed no matter which station they arrived at, into sixth station, the final judgment. All people find eternal life or eternal death in the midst of seventh station, eternity, which will be forever new whatever place a person finds themselves in. Seven qualities of spirit to cross over. Number one. You must learn to spend most of your waking hours thinking, feeling, or speaking to Anarchist or to Moza the Lamb. Number two, you must develop a deep and profound humility in approaching him. Number three, you must clearly distinguish between your formal approach to Moza the Lamb and your casual one. Number four, you must be able to act with him on all levels, for any reason, without any image of yourself in your own mind's eye, and not be self-conscious. Number five, you must view Moza the Lamb as one who has shared emotions with you in all things holy in your humanity. Number six, you must learn to love repentance and be comfortable with all forms of reproval enough to look for it wherever it can be found. Number seven, each one must address in some fashion the first four stations of purifications of Eden while they are living in the temporal world. Languages of the Urko de Shoy. 
Clouds speak the language of watching. Fire speaks the language of humility. Hills speak the language of remembering of all that which has occurred upon them. Grass speaks the language of joining. Rain speaks the language of the cycles of life and rid your life of self-interest, but lay hold of your beginnings. Thunder speaks the language of prophetic insight. Trees speak the language of friendship. The wind speaks the language of feelings. Rocks speak the language of remembering. The sun speaks the language of the present moment. Rivers speak the language of happiness. Mountains speak the language of holiness. Fountains speak the language of eternity. The dew speaks the language of charity. Oceans speak of the power of the love of Anarchist to give life in abundance. Animals speak the language of obedience. Fruit of trees speak the language of personal fulfillment and success. The moon speaks the language of the purpose of your creation. The stars speak the language of Eden. The four orders of creation. Number one. Enoch divided the days of men to bring the calendar, which then allowed anarchists to bring about the order of the gift of life. Oceans are the foundation for the gift of life, and they are the body of the life of anarchist. Botan is the grandmother who joined mankind to this order. Protection from Nephilim, eat nothing strangled. Number two, Yatsikad divided the children of men so they could choose to be righteous or wicked, which allowed anarchists to establish the order of agency. Rivers undergird the order of agency and they are the body of the gifts of anarchists to mankind. Ada is the grandmother who joined mankind to this order by her faith and forgiveness. Protection from Nephilim. Avoid sleeping together as husband and wife during times of menstruation. Number three, Enoch divided families by the sanctity of marriage, which then allowed Erko to Shoy to distinguish the righteous from the wicked. Fountains undergird the sanctity of marriage and they are the body of the purity of anarchist. Shamar is the grandmother who joined mankind to this order by her teaching, virtue, and parenting. Protection from Nephilim. Protection. Use no blood sacrifices. Number four. Enoch divided the authority of Elda which allowed anarchists to bring about the orders of service. Rain undergirds the orders of service for it is the body of the feelings of anarchists. Emory is the grandmother who joined mankind to this order by her seeking repentance and personal guidance by the spirit. Protection from Nephilim. No blood used to appease. Salvation by blood. The seven grandmothers and seven divisions. The grandmothers joinings and the divisions allowed the Lord to accomplish his task in preparing the earth for the righteous to maintain the upper hand through the long duration. Emory, the Holy Spirit Kahi. Aku, who is Ada, the spirit of forgiveness. Shamar, reproval and the man that anarchist became. Ashmoreth joined the women to the service of their husbands. Nayama, the hope of eternal life. Iona, the responsibility before God to be virtuous and accountable. Tava, all the desires of anarchists to the desires of the righteous. Yatsikad, divided the children of men. Enoch, divided the families of the earth. Enoch, divided the sons of heaven. Enoch divided the authority of Elda. Enoch divided the days of men. Enoch divided the earth. Enoch divided the waters. The seer's comments on the Nephilim. The word Nephilim 
and the Strong's is number 5303, a tyrant or bully. The word comes from number 5307, the fall, to fall. The M on the end of the word Nephilim simply indicates the plural. The word giant is included in the number 5303. Definition, but only because of traditional use. The root word number 5307 has no indication to any concept of giant or largeness. From that which I have seen with Urim, they were not any different in stature than the people of the pre flood period. The later traditions about them being large is understandable but inaccurate as to their actual size. First of all, the Nephilim were brought about by hunter gatherers and they had little time to do anything else in life than to simply survive. And these creatures were a huge imposition and hindrance to such a lifestyle. So traditions arose that it took a gargantuan effort to keep them fed. And these Nephilim were individuals who had no conscience. They had very limited ability to reason and they were brought into being to be used as weapons against the enemies of their masters. They could not hunt or perform routine tasks that the society they lived in required. Someone had to do everything for them. That was a hardship for those living in a hunter-gatherer society, and the Nephilim were unpredictable and dangerous. They required handlers, much like a wild animal. It is true that the fallen angels of heaven had children with human women, and the Nephilim were humans with a human father and mother. But their spirits were only one half human. Their animal spirit came from the father and was implanted in their souls at conception by the use of vile sorcery and acts of darkness using blood as the element of wickedness. That is where the idea that they sinned against animals and birds originated and then was carried into later traditions. So you would have a person, male or female, who had their spirit defined by the spirit of an animal, and their mental capacity expressed the animal spirit that they possessed. This dynamic was so completely overwhelming that the ancient societies never forgot them. Accordingly, the Nephilim are widely represented in post-flood religions, so you have a multitude of representations of animal-human creatures threaded throughout religious traditions. They are everywhere in antiquity. To cite just a few, the Sphinx, a lion with a man's head, the Egyptian god Horus, a man with a falcon head, the centaur, a horse with a man's torso, another Egyptian god, Anubis, a man with an ibis head, Hathor, a woman's head on a cow's body, and even angels are thought to be humans with large bird wings. There are many more too numerous to mention. As of this writing, there are genetic experiments underway in laboratories to give humans animals parts, such as eyes and ears to enhance sight and hearing. It was widely prophesied since ancient times that in the end times, the Nephilim would come upon the earth again. Will there again be wars using the Nephilim like in ancient times? So far, the indication is that this genetic engineering is focused on making specialized soldiers. It is time for all to put their trust in the Lord like those righteous of ancient times did. The development and effect of language. The development of language was a major part of the Lord's task to prepare his people for the long duration. He worked hard to bring verbal language to the righteous. The verbal language developed in Qatar with Mozart's help is the origin of the Hebrew language. Verbal language Qatar originated clans. Sabbath, covenant, formal learning, the trump, 
and gathering, storehouse, common use of element, prophecy, the seven joinings, language of feelings, mind originated, the 10 guidances, baptism, languages of the earth or the shoy, all things common, sanctity of marriage, orders of service, calendar, the seven divisions, names of the watchers, and Urm. These things took on different characteristics when in Qatar compared to in Ma'in. In Ma'in, language of feelings emphasized. The clans were patterned on the power of godliness, feelings of the spirit, father, and son. Next, the orders of service were focused on what anarchist feels. Next, the calendar was for comforting anarchist. Next, the urim is a feeling thing, feelings put into words. Next, the names of the watchers came from what they felt, not words. Next, all things in common based on feelings for each other. Next, 10 guidances were for anarchists to feel happy. Next, they all simply loved anarchists. Next, baptism came from feelings. Next, words were not part of the wedding ceremony. No, I do. Next, languages of the Urkota Shoy are languages of feelings. In Qatar, spoken language emphasized the clans were focused on reproval, repentance, forgiveness, social things with language, for example, identifying sin, virtue, confessions. Next, the men's orders of service were focused like the clans, needing language. Next, the Sabbath come from the people coming together and talking and teaching. Next, prophecy required verbalization Next, had ceremonies and instruction how to know and talk with their abiding angels. Next, the storehouse was structured and organized. Next, 10 guidances were for happy, holy society. Next, covenant, in gathering, formal learning required language. Next, the trump involves calling and instructing the Urko de Shoy. Next, common use of element entailed verbal definitions that could be taught and shared. The Lord moved people to Qatar in his task to develop verbal language. Azan developed putting the languages of the Urko to shore to words. Emery put language to hearing the spirit. Shamar put language to parenting and virtue, angels, salvation, and repentance, and helped in articulating the languages of the Urko de Shoy. Abara put to words what happens in life after death and how to cross over. Ozen brought the finished articulation of the languages of the Urko de Shoy. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of our ancient grandmothers, the Appendix. Shalom.